Welcome to Total Spray Droplet Management. Previously, we discussed the importance of managing droplets while in the tank, through the air, and on the target, as well as the agronomic reasons and risks associated with spray applications. Now, we will learn about droplet sizes, how they are measured, and the impact they make. Hi, my name is Scott Brethauer, and I'm an Extension Specialist in Application Technology with the University of Illinois. I work with uh, various types of sprayer technology, especially nozzles and adjuvants. But we're going to start out talking about how spray droplets are measured. Most of the time, the spray droplets from a nozzle are measured using a laser diffraction system. Sounds really complicated, and actually is, but in simplest terms, we spray through a laser. Every time that laser beam is hit by a droplet, the droplet diffracts the light, and the system measures how much that light was diffracted. The unit of measurement we use is a micron, so we'll measure the diameter of the spray droplets in microns. Now, one micron is equal to one millionth of a meter. For most people, that's pretty hard to conceptualize how big that is, so an easy reference point is 100 microns. 100 microns is the diameter of the human hair. Table salt is around 500 microns in diameter. A dime is 1,000 microns thick. Now, that's not the diameter of the dime. That's how thick the dime is. And pencil lead is about 2,000 microns in diameter. One important concept that many people have a hard time understanding is the fact that when we atomize spray through a nozzle, not every droplet is coming out of the same size. For some applications, we might want smaller droplets. Other applications, we might lar want larger droplets. We realize that the droplet size influences both coverage and efficacy, as well as drift potential. But it's not as easy as just making the one droplet size that we want. And this range of droplet sizes, all the way from the smallest droplets to the largest droplets, is called the droplet spectra. And we have various ways that we go about measuring and describing that droplet spectra. One of the terms you might see used is VMD, volume median diameter. And it is the diameter of the spray droplets where half of the spray volume came out in smaller droplets, the other half of the spray volume came out in larger droplets. So if I had a nozzle and it produced a VMD of 400 microns and I sprayed out 10 gallons, five gallons came out in droplets smaller than 400 microns, the other five gallons came out in droplets bigger than 400 microns. So it's the median droplet size based on the volume I'm spraying. Another term that's important is the percentage of volume less than 100 microns. Mentioned that 100 microns is, is a droplet size, it's the diameter of the human hair, it's very small, it becomes difficult at this point to see them. It's also the diameter at which we become especially concerned about drift. Besides the numerical descriptions of the droplet spectra, there is also the ASABE droplet spectra classification system. ASABE is the American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers, and the classification system is a way of simplifying all these droplet measurements and giving you a single classification. So extremely fine, very fine, fine, medium, coarse, very coarse, extremely coarse, and ultra coarse are the different droplet spectra categories that would be assigned by this classification system. So obviously extremely fine is a very small droplet spectra, whereas ultra coarse is a very large droplet spectra. What is the ideal droplet spectra for your application? That depends on a lot of factors. What is the product or products that you will be applying? What is the target, the pest target, and what is the targeted plant? What will the weather conditions be like? There's no one droplet spectra that's going to be perfect for all those applications. So you need to be aware of the product you're going to use, the targeted plant, and the conditions under which you're going to spray. Read the label and decide what is the optimum droplet spectra for your application. Then you are going to uh, select a nozzle type, size and operating pressure, and an adjuvant combination that will create this ideal droplet size for you. Now one of the issues we find is it becomes, once we add the, the adjuvant and the pesticides to the spray solution, they themselves have an impact on the droplet size. So to really know what exact droplet size you'll be making, you need to go out and find some of the, a lot of the research that's been done on uh, droplet spectrum measurements from different nozzle and adjuvant combinations.